Okay, uh, this is uh, Dr. Bharatwaj Mudaswamy. Welcome to this series on how to think and learn. And this lecture is, well, I labeled it lecture zero. It's going to be on complex numbers. So basically, the goal of these sort of videos, and each video will be around 20 minutes long. It will basically be split up into two 10-minute segments. Uh, we'll take a break in the, uh, 10 minutes and then continue. So each video will cover one conceptual material as related to the IIT Indian Institute of Technology joint entrance examination. And the reference I'm going to use for these are, is this set of problems in mathematics from C Engage Learning um, by G. Tawani. And the goal for me through these lectures is to show you basically how to think and learn. That is, how do you approach to solving these uh, problems, or at least how I approach them, and it's uh, hopefully gives you insight into not only complex numbers but problem solving in general. So what are the steps to problem solving? And these steps are beautifully elucidated or clarified by George Polya in the book How to Solve It. So if you don't have a copy of this book or you haven't read this book, you should uh, get this book and read it. It's very, very useful. And basically, Polya talks about the four steps to problem solving. Step one is understand the problem. Step two is devise a plan. Step three is carry out the plan. And step four is check your answer. And you might be saying that, oh yeah, these four steps are obvious. The, well, it is kind of obvious, but the cool thing about, excuse me, Polya's book is that, or the nice thing about Polya's book is that he shows you how to apply these problem solving steps using a variety of mathematical examples. and. Uh, like I said, if you don't have a copy of the book or you haven't read it, you should get it and read it. Very useful. So what I'm going to do in these set of lecture videos is I'm going to apply these techniques, these four techniques, to a variety of topics. And in this case, it's going to be complex numbers. So in the case of complex numbers, in the step one, understanding the problem, there are two main ideas that we need to understand. That is, definitions and basic properties of complex numbers, that's number one. Number two is we should be comfortable in switching between the standard form and the exponential form. Believe it or not, in my opinion, that's pretty much the two main concepts for solving problems related to the joint entrance examination. Again, say I say the main concepts because there are, as you will see when we solve these problems, there are other ideas that we need to be familiar with, but I'll introduce them as and when we encounter them. And basically, this shows you that uh, the um, concepts that the joint entrance exam, and I picked the joint entrance exam because, in my opinion, they're beautiful problems. And there are problems, uh, there are similar problems, in I'm sure, in exams around the world. Uh, but again, I work with the JEE. But the JEE, uh, the math, Mathematics beautifully tests only like a very minuscule of ideas behind complex numbers, minuscule as referred to the whole field of complex analysis from mathematics. But anyway, this is step one, understand the problem. Step two, for devising a plan, carry out, carrying out the plan, this is where we need mindfulness, motivation, and practice. Again, these set of lecture videos are not really to get you specifically into IIT. That's not, that's not the point, in the sense it's to show you the beauty behind these problems. And once you understand the problem, it's up to you to be mindful. For example, as an engineer, one instance of mindfulness is when we have to be very careful of the units, dimensions. You got to be mindful and you got to be motivated and practice enough problems so you have these ideas down cold in your uh, brain. Like I said, there are no such thing as mathematical formulae. There are only concepts that lead to mathematical expressions, which became, which become formally in your head with enough practice. But anyway, the final step, which is check four, step four, which is checking your answer, is we'll use Wolfram Alpha uh, because it's a free online knowledge engine. No, well, not free if you're talking about Wolfram Alpha Pro, but it's an online knowledge engine that's available. So we'll just use that. But let's get started. And the first problem uh, is a kind of like a simple warm-up problem is simply asking you, what is square root of negative 2 times square root of negative 3? It's one of these. 
And basically, what this problem is testing is do you know that square root of A times square root of B cannot be written as square root of A times B because of the fact that we have negative signs. So you can notice that this is equal to square root of 6, which is not the answer because this is not true. And interestingly enough, square root of 6 is one of the choices. So this is not it. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to say, all right, square root of negative 2. And looking at the next problem, I picked like some random problems from the from the book. And I haven't really solved these beforehand. So as we solve this, I'm pretty sure I'll make some mistakes. But the whole point is to encourage you to basically utilize these four problem solving steps. That is how to think and learn. So it's not if, it's when I make a mistake, we'll try to go identify it and go see what goes wrong. What is like the problem solving or the mistake identifying methodology. So not only helps you, this it also helps me. Right. So anyway, let's keep going. Square root of negative two, so what we, times square root of negative three. So what we're gonna do is we can write this as square root of two times negative one times square root of three times negative one. Now what we can do is since we know square root of negative one is I, I can write this as, and I'm see I'm instinctively writing J because in electrical engineering, I is reserved for current. So we use J as square root of negative one. But anyway, I was mindful, so I avoided that. So this is going to be square root. Now what I can do is I can obviously, since I don't have negative signs here, I can say this is square root of two times square root of three, which is square root of six. But I squared, and from basic complex numbers, we know I squared is negative one. So it's negative square root of six. So the answer is B. And if you go back and check, let me check. The, I have the book right here. And we can, lo and behold, it is B. Right? So what this problem is basically testing is do you understand the basic properties of complex numbers, which goes back to what I said over here, definition of the basic properties of complex numbers. So let's just quickly check our answer with Wolfram Alpha. And I have it running here. So what I'm going to do is let me see if I can type this in square root so it understands this. So square root of negative 2 times square root of negative 3. Oh, it looks like somebody already asked for this. Maybe, I don't know. Like they were looking at. Uh, so there it is, negative, uh, negative square root of 6, which is also what we got um, right there. And the thing about Wolfram Alpha is we can see like step-by-step -step solution uh, and it's a little slow so there it is oh you can get three solutions per day uh, full of unlimited access upgrade to work from alpha so it looks like we need an ID and stuff anyway I'll just uh, put this back in and we're not going to do all that obviously in this video that is get an ID sign I mean get show Wolfram from alpha pro let me just leave it at that so we'll just look at the answer there it is. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem, which is this one. The least positive integer n such that 2i over 1 plus i to the n is a positive integer is what? So for this solution, what we're going to do is, what we have to think about is, as we write this, 2i over 1 plus i, we are having the division of two complex numbers. So we should know from our basic complex analysis that it's easier to divide two complex numbers if you convert them to polar form instead of using standard form or rectangular form. So converting this number to polar form, this is 2i, so this is 2e to the j pi over 2. Uh, and to see this, we can just plot this number in the complex plane, real and imaginary axis. So here is our 2i, so it's 2 at an angle of pi over 2. And notice I again used J because of my engineering background. So, okay, I admit, I'll switch between J and I. And let's see. It's 2 E to the I. I mean, I'll switch. I'll try not to switch between J and I, but I can't promise it. 2 E to the I pi over 2 divide by square root of 2, which is what the magnitude of this complex number is. Again, you can just use the complex number expressions, 
to find the magnitude and the phase or you can just visualize it in the complex plane i recommend you do both this is e to the j pi over 4 and this is to the nth power and as we were solving this again you should be mindful and he's they're asking for the least positive integer and since the magnitudes are always positive so let me write this out so in one magnitudes are always positive hence we will utilize only phase angles so and again i wrote j here so this is i boy therefore what we get is e to the i pi over 2 over e to the i pi over 4 to the n which is basically e to the i pi over 2 minus pi over 4 to the n I mean it's basically to the nth power so I can do a, uh, this expression to the nth power I can apply the laws of exponents and simplify it so what I get is e to the i so 90 degrees minus 45 degrees is 45 degrees pi over 2 minus pi over 4 so this is pi over 4 to the n so it is e to the n pi over 4 and if I want this number to be the least positive integer so uh, the least positive n so this is a positive integer can be given by well if you plug in like for like we have multiple choices so let's just take a look if you plug in for example n equals 2 I get pi over 12 I get j here so this is not um, it's not a positive integer if I plug in 4 I'm gonna get e to the i pi which is negative 1 which is not positive if I plug in 8 I'm basically gonna get um, let's see I'm gonna get 2 pi so this is uh, uh, so e to the 2 pi so let me write it like this it's much easier if I do cosine of n pi over 4 plus i sine of n pi over 4 there you go so we plug in uh, pi over 2 I get j not I want if I plug in 4 I get negative 1 now if I plug in 8 let's see if I plug in 8 I get cosine of 2 pi here aha I get uh, cosine of 2 pi is 1 sine of 2 pi is 0 so there you go therefore the answer is n equals 8 this implies n equals 8 for our so I'm not going to write this I'm running out of room basically I'm just going to say that n equals 8 for 2i over 1 plus i to the n to be positive therefore the answer is c and let me check the answer let's see this is actually problem number 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 two actually in the set and it is c okay so here's the second problem and basically to check in wolfram alpha what we have to do is we're going to say 2i over 1 plus i. We're going to plug in different powers of n. So let's just check that. So let's see. This is going to be 2i over 1 plus, and I don't know why I put the brackets there. 2i over 1 plus i. Whoops. Ah the power 2 and let's see if this Wolfram Alpha might interpret the precedence rules yeah that's not what we want so let's just put brackets and clarify to Wolfram Alpha let's get the right precedence so that's that I over 1 plus i squared I forgot what we got this as the result is 2i is not what we want again it's not a positive integer so let's try to the fourth if 
for some computations. Do, do. Negative four, that's not what we want either. So let's do check our answer, which is eight. Sixteen. Okay. So there it is. So that's about it for this problem. And I promised you we'll take a break at the 10 minute park, but I was so excited that I continued with the problem. So I'll give you a preview of the third problem. And now we will take a short break. Okay, continuing. So the short break for you is like instantaneous. For me, I actually took like a five minute break here when we got some water. But anyway, let's look at the third problem. If a complex number Z has modulus one, an argument pi over three, then which is not true about Z squared plus Z? A, B, C, D. So the first step in, again, is understanding the problem is that we have to say that, okay, I mean, we have to see that it's given, the modulus and argument of the complex number are given, so we can quickly write the complex number in polar form or exponential form, one e to the i pi over three, okay? However, the thing we gotta notice is that it's asking z squared plus z. So what we have to do is, since it's easy to add numbers in complex numbers in standard form, as opposed to exponential form, notice I said it's easy. It is not that you cannot add numbers in exponential form, but you will end up converting them to standard form anyway. So one of the things we could do is we could convert this to standard form first and then square it and add it. However, let's just, uh, so let's just simplify this in uh, exponential form convert, then convert to standard form and add. So uh, therefore, what we get is z squared plus z is one e to the, I mean, the one is the modulus is just one, so I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna write it anymore. e to the i pi over three squared plus e to the i pi over three. So now what we will do is e to the i pi over three squared is e to the i two pi over three plus e to the i pi over three. So now we'll convert this into standard form, which is cosine two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three plus cosine pi over three plus i sine pi over three. So cosine uh, two pi over three is cosine of pi over two Let's see, cosine of pi over two plus pi over six, that's what I was looking for, plus i sine pi over two plus pi over six plus cosine of pi over three plus i sine of pi over three. So this is cosine of pi over two plus pi over six, which is, let's see, minus sine pi over six plus i cosine pi over six plus cosine of pi over three plus i sine of pi over three. So this becomes cosine of pi over six is negative one half plus i sine of, i, well, I cosine of pi over six is i times square root of three over two, that's right, uh, plus, no, I'm just thinking to myself, cosine of pi over three is one half, and you can see these cancel, plus i sine of pi over three is i times square root of three over two, so this is i square root of three. Therefore, what we get from here is, let's see, so the magnitude of this complex number is square root of three. It's purely imaginary. It lies on the imaginary axis. Oh, then which is not true. I'm like, wait a minute, A, B, C are true. So <laughs> then which is not true about Z squared plus Z is all of these are true. So D is not true. There you go. That's a nice problem. Therefore, the answer is D. Ah, that was awesome. So let me see, we're almost out of time. We had a 20 minutes. So let's see, this is actually problem where we're just hitting the 20 minute mark. So I'm sorry for going over. This problem is just too beautiful not to do. So this is, let's see, this is problem number 16. 
Yeah, it's D. So that's the answer. Let's just quickly check with Wolfram Alpha and then we're done. So basically I want to figure out what e to the i times, uh, let's see, it was chuck, 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 pi, I mean, I know pi over 3 squared is 2 times pi over 3 plus e to the i times pi over 3 equals come on okay approximate decimal approximation there it is 1.732 blah 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 times i so yep it is square root of 3i and that's what we got okay so we are done with this first uh, video on how to think and learn and this realized complex numbers uh, exact complex number problems from the joint entrance examination IITJE so in the next uh, lecture we will look at methods of differentiation as an example as example problems for how to think and learn all right see you then